What's up, guys? It's me, Iggy. I'm here with Zach and all of my amazing friends up here. And we're just t- talking a lot of sh- about music, my life, my good decisions, my bad decisions, and like why I'm so hot. Let's, let's do this. Hi, beautiful human. I'm Hello. Zach. <laughs> that's uh, Dan and that's Iggy <laughs> Azalea. Hey. Yay! Yay. I made it. Yo, thank you really for taking the time and giving us energy today to dissect a body of work, but also cover a bunch of different topics here that are pretty significant one because like, okay, let's start from the beginning. Like, are you, is this actually it? Like this is the album and then you're done making music for how long in your mind right now? Um, well, I have a distribution deal for my label, Bad Dreams, with Empire that was two albums long. So this is my me delivering that. So contractually, I don't have anybody that I need to make happy. You know what mm. I mean? Um, so I don't have any plans to make another album, but that may, you know, I may in three or four years feel like, oh, I have something more I need to say, in which case... I'll go get another deal and I will make another project. But I don't have that obligation and I, I'm i not looking for a record deal. So right before you get into this last album, mm-hmm. do you know it's going to be your last one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> really? Well, well because <laughs> obviously it's, con- <laughs> it's contractually the end, right? So you know that yeah. that's coming up. but obviously you you go in knowing that like this is going to be the period yeah I mean I wasn't sure at first because I had a lot of other people that were asking me knowing that I would kind of essentially be a free agent like we want to sign you and you're done and um I never even sat down honestly and had those meetings but it was something that I discussed like within my team and with my management like are, are you going to go and take another record deal and what does that look like for you with the other projects that I know I have coming out in the next, what was then like year or two in, in the future, but now Mm. is actually happening. Um, and they, they wanted me to take another record deal and I kind of didn't really, I don't know. I just didn't really feel like it. (laughs) I just didn't really (laughs) want to. So I didn't. Um, is it hard? Taking on a, a, a commitment like that and having to create a certain amount of art, promote it to a certain degree. It's very time consuming, but I love spending my time doing that. Um, I think that wasn't necessarily the time factor wasn't necessarily it for me. I just felt like I. Um, there are so many different factors to this like decision, but I think that. I just, it was a lot easier to talk about a lot, a wider range of topics before I was really popular because I didn't feel that there was that speculation about what or who I was talking about or, um, you know, I, there were, there wasn't that large volume of people that felt that they had an invitation to discuss whatever it was that they thought I was talking about. And sometimes maybe you are talking about something and other times you're not. And suddenly you have like this conspiracy theory about a song on your record or whatever the hell. And. As I've gotten older, I just um, I just feel less willing to share certain things about my life. If I'm just being honest, I mean, I don't really owe it to anybody to have to share certain elements. But, but when you're making art, music, it can suffer to. in that way. The thing is, though, I don't want to. That's the thing. But- um, so I just feel like for me, it was it made sense to do this project and then to not do any more because I don't. Being that I don't really want to talk about a wide array of to- of topics that I prefer to be private about um, now that I'm really in the public eye so much, um, I'm just like, what am I supposed to like rap about for a whole like another two or three albums? Like being really rich and like being really pretty or something? Like what, you know? Like yeah. I don't really feel there are only so many one liners I can write about that. Are you afraid to share? Or are you afraid of the reception and people being critical to you sharing? No, um, I just it's I just don't want to. It's like meeting a stranger on the plane and then they like ask you about how it's going with your boyfriend or something. It's like I just it's not that I necessarily care about what your reaction to it is. It's just that it's not your business and I don't really want to have a discussion about it with you. I have become increasingly private the older that I get. Um, before I just when I was a lot younger, I would just would probably tell the person sitting next to me on the plane. Everything. What the inside of my 
looks like if I asked. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just changed naturally over time. But this, I feel like, you know, one of our first conversations that we ever had was about this topic. And it was yeah. about hip hop radio in particular. Really, I mean, being, to, to, just to be frank and kind of, it's too simple to say this, but being misogynistic and feeling entitled to really analyzing every lyric that you put out there and then grilling you on those actions. So what forces you to become quiet, though? What forces you to... Mm, to be, it's not necessarily, I hate the word force. It's just because... Leads you to it? I just, it's not even hip hop radio. It's just like the world is on the internet and I don't want my life on the internet to that degree the things that i get requests from even my own fans to want to talk about it's just like i have no desire to talk about that with you is this why you stopped posting photos of your son online um partially yeah it has a little to do with that yes it's just like i just don't i just don't want to talk about that with you (laughs) so were you honest in the new classic yes yes totally yes, yes because i i wrote it all before i was very famous So it was really easy to do those things. And I didn't have that like snowballed effect of what we're talking about, what you're talking about, Zach. Um, And it's just like, I don't know, I could breathe and there's like a think piece about it. And it's just like, I don't really care to discuss things with you that already aren't really things I feel like discussing with strangers. And I particularly don't feel like discussing them with strangers when I know that, that, that the level of speculation and like kind of always negativity or whatever it is that comes with it is not something that I find very enjoyable. And I'm just like, why am I still, why am I, what, what is the, what's the functionality or where is the joy in this for me? You know what I mean? Like I, I don't have to make music. Let's just be real. Like I'm at a point in my life where it's like, I don't have to do that. Yeah. That's not like making me all the money to pay, keep my lights on or something, you know, like I can, I can opt out of everything and I'd still have a very nice, happy life. So I'm really only doing this for my enjoyment. And I don't really find in much enjoyment in, in making songs that are topical in that way. And I also think it's a little purposeless to make a f- – you can't make a full album body of work if you're not going to dive into those details. And so for me, I was like, I think it makes sense that I really would love to like make an album, the end of an era, and talk about kind of like this time capsule of my life, my 20s, um, and looking at that as a retrospect, that interests me to tell those stories um, and to let my fans in that way or have something they can relate to in that way, especially since most of them are younger than me. I'm 31 with a kid. Most of them are. They're in their early 20s or late teens, and they're kind of like figuring out things that I went through already and that I have like a retrospect perspective of. So I'm like, let me, I really do want to like, touch on these things or share some of those stories that maybe I didn't before and let's like let's lay all that out there that's fun and enjoyable to me but I'm not gonna like make a song that's like dissing my baby daddy or something like those are the kind of songs I feel like people like really want from me like talk about your trauma and it's like I don't really want to (laughs) and and, so no (laughs) but but you also make note that like that is what is expected out of out of a typical body of work is like yeah. this depth and this sharing and this tearing apart of your life present day, your life from the past, where you want to go in the future. Did you enjoy making music when you were making the new classic? Yeah, I mean, I enjoy making music now. <laughs> but but <laughs> do you not, not enjoy re- releasing it then? Uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. I love making it. I still love making it. I don't love releasing it. I'm not going to lie to you. When did you hate releasing it? When did that start? Mm, uh, After the new classic. Because of the way it blew up. Yes. I mean, that changes your life. Yeah, it's, um, there are, of course, super enjoyable parts of it, but there's also a lot of anxiety and just, like, I feel like every time I release something, I kind of, like, have to just there's always a bit of a like struggle after for me mentally like keeping it all together or f- having genuine fun with the release part of it yeah. um the aftermath of like putting it out for me is always a uh, weight on my shoulders that I don't find very enjoyable and I really love being in the studio and making everything and um I get really excited about doing all of the visual stuff to it and I get really hyped up about putting it out and then there's and I'm not even talking about like 
how much your music sells or success or those sorts of like measures of success. I don't even mean those things. I just mean like the weird level of scrutiny that I'm like, this is not enjoyable. I don't want to feel like I'm constantly having to play defense about something that I'm actually like was really positive and enjoyable for me that now kind of is not usually after I put it out and I don't really I just don't want to like continue that cycle of things yeah, it goes it's from not he- serving me yeah it goes from healing to triggering to a certain degree yeah exactly and that's just the reason why I feel like I don't want to dive into those sorts of subjects with my personal life because I'm like I have my own traumas that I've experienced and healed from and I don't really like I don't really want to discuss them with strangers and have your opinion about them when uh, you know writing a song about it could never encompass all of the nuances of that and I'm I just don't want to talk about that with 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 randoms random people know. yeah Sorry. it's for family and a therapist I don't. yeah why do you think people still continue to hate on you no matter what you do mm, i don't know ask them i'm not here to <sighs> lay out i i can't i'm not a reddit theory page you know what i mean it's just like, i don't know i could go so deep into the 101 different things it could be but you only they know, well, know. why did you stop singing on songs Oh, you know, I love singing, but I um, I just don't really feel confident singing live. And I think if you're going to make a song, you need to be able to to perform it live. And it's just so, I just don't feel, I can sing, but I have to do a lot of takes <laughs> to get a good, I'll be honest with you. Because I'm not naturally a singer, but I can have fun and like carry a melody and stuff. But that takes me a lot of takes to get like the good ones out of those for hooks and stuff like that. And I can't really replicate that in a live scenario confidently. So for me, I prefer to stick to things that I know I can nail and that will sound like the song live. And so for that reason, I prefer to kind of like stay away from singing. Respect. Because a lot of people would do it because they know it's something that they can quote unquote kind of do that other people cannot do. Yeah, I can kind of sing a bit, but not live. I can't nail that. I'm not Ariana, you know, I can't like go on and like hit my note. Every time. It takes me like eight times to get that right. But by number eight, um, it's awesome. But it's f- killing it on eight. But I can't go on stage and be like, just give me seven more tries. <laughs> just just seven more tries. I'm going to get this. I've got it. I, I don't. <laughs> I can't do it. And so I just I just feel that it takes away from the live show. So <laughs> I have my like teams and a few other songs like that that I, that I do still have. But like I'm not f- singing those live. No, that's a dance break. It's like, and I, I don't feel confident, especially when it takes me that many tries when I am sitting there with my breath caught, sitting there in a studio ready to go with my tea. Yeah, every variable yeah. is like, like control. I have a vocal coach like, no, no, no. Uh, uh, uh. You know, like, I don't have those things. I don't have the perfect storm on stage. I'm probably like 45 minutes in. I've lost my breath i secretly want to vomit my pants have got a rip in them like i don't know the dance move whatever it is i probably just fell over if it's a sh- one of my shows and I, I it's not the environment that's gonna bring out some vocal f- performance i mean it would be memorable but not in the way that i'd want um so no so i tried to stay away from that have you have you taken time to look back on the new classic like have you realized what made that album so special and latch on to people the way it did i don't know i've never really thought about that to be honest with you i don't know it's really just, sometimes the stars just align i don't know well i i mean i agree with that but also like i listened to the new classic and the mm. end of an era back to back to one oh, another cool. yeah i thought it was a really cool experience actually that's actually cool i've never thought to do that there's commonalities between both projects in terms of sonics to a certain degree well yes that's intentional yeah so it's intentional because you're starting something and then you're ending something but edm and like dance music kind of trickles into a lot of the stuff that you've done yes i love i love to experiment with different sounds obviously but but the the end of the era kind of leans pretty heavy on that edm sound yes Yes. that's intentional definitely what's in why is it intentional um, because for me, when I was making this album, I kind of like broke it down into four sections for myself sonically, which was me at 20, me at 24, me at 28, and then me like currently at 30. And that's how I focused on things um, like from a sonic standpoint of the production that I was utilizing. And, um, you know, in my early 20s, I wasn't signed yet and I was doing a lot of mixtapes, Trap Gold being my favorite one of those. And they do- they played around very heavily with electronic sounds 
Um, and I hadn't really fully gone back to the, that type of experimentation again, but that's always a project that I uh, say that is my favorite because it had, it was very like fearless in those ways that it played around so heavily with experimenting with things that you don't necessarily always see yeah. with rap music. And so, you know, I tried to make the first quarter of my project really like, um, take a lot from Trap Gold sonically. And then after that, at 24, I put out the new classic and that was more pop leaning and I had a lot of those bigger pop um, singing hooks. And so as you get into that section of my album, that second quarter of it sonically is really like leaning on that inspiration from the new classic. And then throughout the 28 portion of like the way I view my album that third quarter of it is a lot more of the heavy 808 drums and hip-hop elements um and it's a little bit darker um in that way that kind of reminds me a lot of 2017 uh 18 19 you know I had survived the summer and I did um in my defense and they were very like heavy hip-hop records which I think for me was like kind of my rebuttal to a lot of people saying like you're a pop pop rapper you're not a real rapper and so I think for that reason, maybe consciously, maybe subconsciously, I wanted to like lean in and be like, no, I'm doing all these really heavy drum, like open rap. I can't rap. Ew, you know, um, so it like really gets into that. And then the last kind of portion of the last three songs on that, I think it's like Sex on the Beach, Day Through Miami and uh, Good, Good times, times with Bad People is kind of just like where I feel I'm at now within my sound, not necessarily, not really referencing anything from the past, but just kind of being present in what I'm, where I'm at uh, now with like my sound and what I'm making. So it was like kind of just like a retrospect of sonic things, um, kind of like a journey through my 20s. But, so if the three or where the last three are where you're at today, but that's not necessarily where you're going to be at next because you don't know where you're going to be in a couple of years when you choose to make music again, if you choose if to I do choose it. To, yeah, exactly. So how does this project <laughs> even begin? Like, how do you, like, you obviously know you want it to be the last one. Yes. So do you go back and soak in everything you've done or? Yeah, I mean, I, I do every project to be honest with you. <laughs> I really do <laughs> at the start of every project. But that doesn't mean I necessarily draw reference from it. Understood. Um, but this was to intentionally, obviously, draw reference. And so is the music videos. And the, even my album cover, you know, is a nod to my first tour, which was <laughs> Hotel Iggy. And it was very Scarface, Miami Vice themed. And so so is this tour I'm about to do with Pitbull, the um, Feel Good Tour. My whole set for that is basically based on Grand Theft Auto Miami. <laughs> so it's really cool. Um, but yeah, it all like has that element of like, it's Miami Vice, it's bright, it's colorful, it's a little bit trashy and the people are f- dying. And it's awesome. Because <laughs> Scarface, everyone dies. My, you know, Grand Theft Auto, everyone's f- dying. <laughs> so I love a good death. It's fair. I love a bit of drama. In my music and visuals, I think people know that now. If if I'm doing a, vi- it's probably going to have a car or a dead body. Like I, you know, I go back to that a lot. I also feel like you <laughs> you've manifested some in your lyrics. Like li- listening back to the new classic, "Impossible Is Nothing" is like, is that not how you've kind of you you proceed to live a few years of your life after that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, what an amazing thing! Just the the title alone. Yes, I mean, I definitely spoke a lot of things into fruition. On that album, for are you sure. are you doing that in this album at all? No, because it's a retrospect. So it's not, so it's not about about the future. It's talking, talking about, about the past. past. Does that hurt yeah. you to a certain degree that you're in a place where you're making music that is reflective of what you've done, as opposed to where you're at and where you're going? Oh uh, no, because I just think that it's I uh, my fans, like I mentioned before, they're so much younger than me that for me to be talking about this is me or my child or whatever the hell, like I don't know that there's much that they could take from that, that they Mm. could feel connected to. And I think that it's more fun and interesting to talk about like, you know, even something like, um, shut the up. Like I'm just talking about a night that I did drugs with my friends and went out on South Beach and got in a fight with a girl. Like (laughs) that's something that you might do in your twenties, you know? And it's like, if I can give a perspective on it, whether it be slightly comedic or whether it's something like Day 3 Miami, which is kind of like, I actually made that song directly after Shut the Up, even though it's not that way on the album, where it's like, okay, I've been here, 
I've been like partying for a few days and now I'm just realizing that this is just like I'm over this. It's a mess. Ugh, I hate the guys we've been talking to. I don't even know if I like my own friends really. Like I've got to get my together. Like just even things like that in retrospect. Um writing about them is so funny to me from a different perspective of of when you're younger and going through them and I think that like for me it was more interesting and fun to talk about those things and know that like these are a lot of the things that my fans are doing now yeah. that I can offer a more grown up but funny perspective on. I don't know that like a 21 year old like gay kid needs wants to hear about me feeding my baby at 2 a.m. Like I don't know <laughs> that that guy really cares about that. And it's like and there are not to say that there aren't people that would, but I just think that. It's my job in a way to find ways to connect with the people that are interested in me um, from a fan perspective. And it's my job to figure out, like, what are the pieces of me and what are the pieces of you that we both have in common? And it's like, well, I want to discuss these things because I never really talked about a lot of these stories or, I, you know, and I think actually I see you guys on Twitter all the time having these kinds of experiences. And I'm like, oh, I remember doing that when I was that age. Actually, I want to talk about it. I want to write a song about it. That's more interesting to me. And I honestly don't naturally feel like I want to write a song about my babies Mm. growing up or whatever. Like, I don't really feel that I want to make a song about that. And I feel almost like there's this forced pressure that's like... Well, you did that now, and you're over 30, so you have to make music about that. And it's like, well, I don't want to. So how about that? I don't want to because I feel that it's boring, and I don't care. Does I a, don't want to write about that. Does a part of you wish that you were writing about these things, but they were all happening to you in real time as opposed to being No, reflective? because who wants more than a decade of that? <laughs> Not me. That's no, it. man, I'm good. I just want to sit in my pool in my house that I and have a glass of wine and make some cook some dinner for my friends like that's my night and having fun now i don't want to lose my shoes walking down the street and my shirt smells like vomit and i'm like what with my friends like i actually did that a thousand times and it was super fun i did it i'm good i there's a problem in life if you still want to do that after doing it for a decade. Like yeah. some people, they don't get to live in their 20s and they have that moment in their 30s or whatever. So I'm not going to put an age limit on when it's not okay. But I think everybody should have that like wild, crazy adventure for a few years. And then you're kind of supposed to like uh, evolve away out of it, which I have. I'm like, I don't really, wa- I don't want to do that eternally. I'm good. Is there anyone for you to maybe write music about your kid, but it's just for you? No, <laughs> not right now, um, but I'll still write. I mean, I have like a ghost name that's registered and stuff, so I still plan on writing and I write, I can write a very, I can write well for like R&B or pop yeah. music just as good as I can write a rap. I can't, can I sing it? No, um, but like I'll write stuff like that with other references and then I'll let the reference singers go in and do it. I mean, like Sex on the Beach with Sophia Scott, I wrote that with her, all of those melodies and stuff like that, I have a heavy hand in writing. So I feel confident about doing that kind of thing and probably still will do that kind of thing, but just not with my name attached to it because I have such a large fan base that I think to see my name on a record that I didn't, that I wrote on but I'm not a part of, weird. Um, it's weird. And I've well, fans will be like, oh, like, so you're stealing her song. Or like, it just gets weird. And it's like, uh, I think it would be better for me to keep my name off this. So I did go to the trouble to make a alternate writing name in the last like four months and I'll definitely continue doing that I know too many producers and people just to stop writing but I think that my I can it's also very like freeing to write from a name that's not yours because I can say so many different things you are living a life that deserves to be documented right like you are making memories and doing things that well, I'm not like magically going out of the private eye. I'm public eye or anything. I still have my other projects and things that I'm doing. I just don't feel right now that I want to write another album. I can write on other people's albums um, for sure. Like I want to hear what somebody else is going through in the studio mm-hmm. and what's happening with their boyfriend or whatever. The f- I want to write a song with them about it. Like that's what I feel like doing right now. Is this the hardest album to create and then release because you are branding it as the end of the an last era? one um no 
<laughs> whatever. Some people will probably feel disappointed. Some people will love it. And it was kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I don't ever really put pressure on anything in an abnormal way like that. I'm just like, um, if I want to, if I'm not happy with it, I'll go back and make another one. But I am. So That's it. Because you really are in control. Yeah. How do you know it was finished? I just knew that it was finished. I worked on it. I started working on it January 2000 and, uh, 2020. January 2020 I started and then I finished it. Mm, I want to say like May. The end of May was my last session. What was the last song you did for it? Good Times with Bad People. Good times with bad people. Yeah, that was the last song I wrote on it. Is it hard to get yourself in the mindset to write a song like Emo Club Anthem when you're not out there loving drugs in the club right now? No, because th- that has a little current inspiration too. <laughs> 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 um, not necessarily about being in the club, but I think that like when you you know, we're always disappointed by people and sometimes like when I wrote that song, um, I was like going through a lot of currently too and I was like, man, you know what, I don't even want to like talk about what I'm going through today. I don't even want to get in the studio and tell you all about what I had to deal with today before I got here because I just want to have like a good time and drink some wine and I don't even want to talk about it. And that's kind of how that song came about. I was like, this kind of reminds me of like when you're in the club, when you're younger and you're actually having a terrible time, um, but you're having the best time because you're probably really drunk on drugs and you're just like, I don't want to think about it. I'm having fun with my friends, but it's such a almost like forced fun. And you're just like, I don't care, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> F- um. It's like that weird juxtaposition that I think is really interesting. And so I just felt like I'd had such a day that day that I was like, I really have, I want to write a sad song, but I refuse to write a sad song. I will write a happy song, but it's the most like passive aggressive fun song of all time. So that's what, that's what Emo Club Anthem is. Well, you did point out like there are no sad songs on the album. Mm. Is that done purposely? I mean, there are, but there are like day three Miami isn't the best isn't the nicest topic when you really listen to it. It's just, like, packaged up in fun. Um, and same with, like, yeah, Emo Club Anthem isn't, like, the funnest topic when you really listen to it, but it's very packaged up in fun. Like, also, Good Times with Bad People. New Year's really- Eve. I don't know if you heard the deluxe. That song mm-hmm. is, like, a. it's a this song called New Year's Eve, which is basically, like, you know, you remind me of New Year's Eve because it's supposed to be this thing that you work up in your head to be so much fun, but actually is just such a f- disappointment. Every time. Um, every time time it just never lives up to expectations and you're that person you are the personification of new year's eve it seems like a compliment but it's really not like who, um who are you thinking about though when you're writing that are you thinking about a person or are you thinking about a collection of people a collection of people really when i write songs nowadays i don't just like focus on one particular experience i think like when you have had a lot of experiences because you're a little bit older it's funner to write songs because you can draw from like now you're like, I got four different scenarios of that. You know. <laughs> yeah. You draw from whatever's the yeah, most relevant. I'm, like, I'm just making like the mega villain. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I'm constructing songs. It's fun though. But actually, like because you have so much in your like mental archive of memories. I've got such a wide repertoire of bull- <laughs> I cannot draw on. Yeah. So good times with bad people. Yeah. I, I by the way, like hit me because it is a realization like you have party friends that aren't really your friends yes you're having a great time but they (laughs) terrible individuals terrible and that's the song (laughs) yes exactly a lot of that a lot of that a lot of that yeah it's just basically like look this seems good while we're hanging out but in reality when i wake up the next day i hate these people they suck yeah that guy sucks and this is And I don't think I can give you what you're looking for. You know, like, I think you need something that I can't provide for you or that you can't provide for me. And that's like essentially that song in a nutshell. Is that a realization that you're spent having good times with bad people? Uh, In the song? Yeah. Or like, I mean, well, obviously it's you're looking back at events of you being with bad people. Yes. But having a good time. Yeah. But I think it was that like... You have to realize eventually that, like, this is the wrong 
thing you're doing. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't think I have those. Now, especially now that I have a kid, it's like I'm not really having good times with bad people. I think in the moment, it you know you're doing it a lot yeah. of the time. I don't know about for you guys, but for yes. me, I know these people are yeah. but I you, know but you, choose, you choose to stay I for a good time. I would do so much when I was younger and just be like, I'm doing it f- for the story, for the story, for yes. the story, for the fun, for the adventure. <laughs> and it's like, mm, I mean, you tell yourself that, but then in retrospect, you're like, was it that or was it that I didn't want to be lonely at home that night? Was it that I didn't want to be with my own thoughts that night? Was it that I was bored? Was it, you know what I mean? Was I looking for something else And this? Did they provide something else for me more than just a story like I was telling myself? Like, what, was I the bad person in this scenario sometimes? Was I the person maybe that was being toxic at the time? Like, um, so I, I think like, you know it when you're doing it, but then really in retrospect or as you get older or you understand your behavior more, you're like, mm, you thought that you even knew why you were doing it then, but it's actually even deeper than you even really f- knew. That's like what I'm trying to get at here is like, you're learning new things about yourself from making this album because you're going back in time and re-dissecting things you've already lived. Oh yeah, for sure. And that was super fun. Like I really, and honestly, I enjoyed this so much, this whole process this album was a lot of fun. It was fun to like unpack all my favorite music videos even or just songs that I love so much and to really look at them and say, why did I enjoy this? Why do I like this song? Is it the transition? Is it the drums? Is it what I was saying? Is it that it's experimental? Like, I just liked going mulling through everything and as well just being with people in the studio that I was working with the entire time. Like, you know, what about this jumps out to you? Because those guys weren't there when I made that stuff. So... It's cool having that perspective, that, too. That is cool to sit down with people and listen to your old stuff and be, be like, like, what about this jumps out to yeah, you? you? Yeah, know? what stands out? You weren't a fan or listening or whatever at that time. Really so cool. what do you think about, does this, what, or if it's not special to you but it's special to me, why is it special to me? What is it about it that I like so much? You know, as I listen back to the new classic, I really, one, realize how ahead of your time you were. Oh, thank you. And two, the album's so good. And it's filled with so many hits. It does have a lot of hits. I mean, <laughs> anything after that is, it's hard. Of course. That's it's, why they call it the sophomore slump. It's hard a- to follow up something that good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, totally. But you, I mean, even in the verbiage and the words you were using, mm-hmm. like just about hanging out and the way you talked about friendships and, I mean, words that we use today in excess, but, yeah. but weren't being used in 2014. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I haven't dissected it that hard. But <laughs> I, it had been so long since I had heard it that I like. It sounded like it could have come out that morning. Oh, thank you. That's it, nice. Timeless. Thank you. Really. Thank you. Though it was the new classic, so it, that's what I really was hoping that it would stand a test of time and not age like. Shit. So thank uh, you. <laughs> you set a bar. <laughs> And you said I was trying bar- to set a bar for myself, and I did it better than I ever thought I could. <laughs> <laughs> I could never follow it up again. But also, um, you set a bar for everybody else, and I oh, think that you. should be understood too. Is like, dude, your flow, like to your point of like when your name is on a, a record, people expect your flow. They know oh, you. your tone. They know a way a verse comes out. I mean, yeah, there's a big expectation when. Yeah, it's in I you. mean, I think that I th- I think I'm a pretty good uh, writer. So, Are th- thank you. Did, did all the verses on this new album come easy to you? Was there anything that was difficult? No, honestly, there was nothing that was difficult on this one. Um, I had a lot of fun. I drank a lot of wine making this. And, like, I like to write my verses on whiteboard. And um, Why? Uh, I don't know. I just like having it on. I like to have a whiteboard on my lap. Okay. Um, like, I like to be in a computer chair that has a... Uh, what is it called? Armrests? Oh, so oh, that so I can put, the, I like to put the board okay. on the armrests and like one that's about the size of a flat screen TV. I, I mm-hmm. like to put it on the armrest so I can just lean on it and I write on it and I scribble on it and I write on my verses that way. And, um, and that whiteboard I don't know. makes it into the booth? Yeah, I think it's fun to do it that way because I can discuss it with like my vocal engineer and then my the whoever's producing usually on that album it was always AJ who would produce a song or if it, he wasn't producing it he still would record me as the engineer so he was someone that was there every day for that and um I don't know I just I feel like when you're I don't write on paper like on a notepad nowadays you would write on your phone but there's something about that that feels like less communal to me 
in terms of sharing ideas and I like writing out ideas and as I'm writing them, everyone seeing like mm-hmm. what I'm writing and having opinions about those things. Like for, when I start a song, it's not like that I write a line. I'll talk about, we'll write out, like I'm I'm going to write a song about this and I'll talk about my talking points that I, whatever I'm feeling about it and like be like, what about this resonate? Like of these seven things I'm saying, what resonates with you guys, this thing and this thing, and, you know, then I might have three or four bars. I like to just write and keep going, erasing, writing, erasing, writing, and Have you always fun. worked that way? No, I haven't always worked that way. I really started working that way on in my defense, and it just, I really love to write that way. It's so fun to me. A lot of writers come in sometimes and will see that I do it that way, and they're like, oh, wow, I've never seen someone write it that way. That's fun. That's cool. That works. How did you do it? I like that other people can come and write something that they want on their board for me to see. or uh, But we'll see. You know, how did they work? How did you do it before the whiteboard? Um, Before the whiteboard, it would be on my phone. Got it. On my laptop. And I would do that a lot too, like writing on my notepad on my laptop and then showing someone and then maybe they change something or we go back and forth sliding it across. But I think that it's better for everyone to be able to see it. I have so many pictures on my phone. Like after I'm done, I'll just take a picture of the whiteboard. That's cool. And then just go in and read my picture Uh. (laughs) on my phone. You know what I mean? Um, It's annoying having to write the lyrics after the fact because I'm like, I've got to go through all these whiteboard pictures. (laughs) <laughs> do you, but it's lots of fun. Do you only write to production, or will you ever come up with a line and then build from that? Mm, sometimes I might like wake up from having a dream or something, and I thought of like some weird line or some weird perspective about a song, um, and I'll be like, I'll write it down as an idea of a topic, and I might come in and say like, I've got a song that I want to make about whatever the it is, this thing. Let's expand on it. But I don't just no, I don't write a whole song to no music. If I did that, it'd probably be a poem. <laughs> you know. <laughs> When you're writing out the timeline of the stories throughout this album, did you figure that all out before the album started or as the album was going on, were you like, oh, I need to fill this in or I, this story needs to be here or when I was this old? That was something that happened a little bit later on. Yeah, we just kind of like went for it um, and knew that we wanted to kind of be all encompassing and touching all those things. And we might be doing like super crazy EDM music for like, two weeks and then we'd be like we have so many of these i think we can move on and let's focus more on having more 808 heavy sound or something um and then kind of towards the end of the project we really looked at what we thought we were keeping and saw some of the gaps um like good times with bad people was one of those places where there was a gap on that where i was like i need to make something that feels more current um sonically with where i'm at and then also maybe more of a grown-up perspective of the like towards the beginning of the album you're talking about shut the f- up all those sorts of songs um emo club anthem where they're not like that evolved and they're thinking of like i'm just gonna do drugs f- this i'm having fun it's like no you're not um <laughs> whereas good times with bad people being more at the end is like a more evolved uh comment commentary yeah. of like probably the person at the beginning of this album making emo club anthem doesn't realize they're having good times with bad people so much <laughs> but the person at the end does you realize it yeah so it's cool what do you learn about yourself, if anything, from making this? Uh, honestly, I don't know. It was just a happy journey. I think, like, f- making this album really, like, reminded me of how much I have done. Um, and I don't even mean, like, for other people or for fans or, like, for hip-hop. I don't even mean that. I just mean, like, how much I've done in terms of my own creativity and how much I really have experimented or how many sounds I've really played around with or how much life I've lived, how many different lives. I feel like I've lived nine lives and I'm only in, just in my early 30s. So it's like it was cool to see, to go back through all, throughout that sonically, artistically, visually, just me as a person looking back and being like, wow, I really have grown a lot. I really have played around with a lot. I really have touched on I really have never been scared to experiment and try those things and i felt i'm like "Mm, i should be happy with myself i did a lot this is pretty cool you did you've done an exceptional amount (laughs) like like it's it's wild so the fact that you can go back and listen to all these bodies of work and hear your life in them yeah again like this last album end of an era is a retrospective Mm -hmm. so we're not hearing current life no well i mean sex on the beach um, you did mention your son once, but it was just about like dressing him in designer clothes. Yeah, I'm not like I said. It's not, I'm, I'm just like mm, stranger, not your business. Um, nah. 
<laughs> so like having a baby really didn't, doesn't change the way you make music outside of being more private. Yeah, I mean, I was already that private. <laughs> yeah, you were. Being FMR. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think I bet that met, but like I said, maybe in four or five years when I have had more time having a kid, maybe there's more that I, perspective that I feel I can offer on that. Like right now, I don't feel there's something pressing that I have to share with the world about my epiphany about being motherhood or something. I don't. No insane realization that you've had? No. <laughs> Would you encourage your son to get into the entertainment industry if you wanted to? People ask me this often and like here's the thing. I think the entertainment industry is dark as hell and it's scary and people take advantage of creative people all the time and chew you up and spit you out but I would never discourage my son from anything that he was really passionate about or that he had real genuine talent um, and so if he ended up being talented as a musician and that's what he wanted to do, then of course I would have to help him as much as I could and offer my advice. Same with his father, really, you know, but it's just like, and I think he shares the same sentiment with me about that. That's like, if he wants to f be a landscaper, he can do that. If he wants to be a athlete, he can do that. If he want, whatever it is. If he, want, if he li likes biology, he can wants to be an engineer, anything. Like, I'm going to 100,000% support whatever it is that my son likes to do, even if it's something that I'm like, ooh, that's a little scary. Like, you know, I can't let my experience or my, like, trauma or taintedness within that, like, um, bias make him not be able to have an experience at all because it's his life to live. I just have to be, my job is to be supportive of him and to like build his self-esteem and help him do whatever it is he wants to do really. So there is no off limit job that he cannot have. Totally. And, and by the way, that's the role of a mom. And at the same time, like the industry could be dark, but it's also given you so much. As of course it has. I mean, my life is amazing. Like <laughs> no complaints about it it is don't mock my words it's amazing um it's the it really is so uh, there are no complaints but it is like i think it's uh there's a lot of like uh things you have to overcome mentally with any kind of high pressure job though not just music it's music at this level is a lot of pressure for anyone sports at that level is a lot running a company at that level is a lot so it's just like i think in success comes a weight of responsibility that you have to carry and for me i feel that way or jaded or i'm saying this about the music industry because that's what my profession is or i'm one of the best at my profession but if i ran the walgreens you know what i mean regional location <laughs> of all those stores i'm sure i would feel that that same pressure in a different way so it's like for that reason, I don't want to say, like, you can't do that. It's like, you can do whatever you want. It's been great. There's, with great success comes great responsibility. Amen. Peach body. Is that describing you? Um, I what guess hot, sexy. <laughs> I'm a hot, sexy. So, yes. <laughs> there are the hot, sexy in this world, too. It's for you, too. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I think I have a peach body. Well, I did want to, speaking of bodies, why is it important for you to open up about what you've done? Because in Brazil, you said pay for this body and none of it's cheap. I mean, I've never not talked about my plastic surgery. I'm on the f <laughs> cover of Cosmopolitan talking about my f nose job. Like, I've always talked about that. But we don't want to share, right? I mean, I don't, I'll give you a little one liner here and there. Don't ask for the f name of my surgeon. You're not going to get it. Do your own f research. But <laughs> your nose might not look like my nose after that, but it's true. You know, I don't, you don't, I didn't magically sprout tits at 25, you know, <laughs> like I think we all know what's going on here. Um, so yeah, I'll touch on it for a little hee hee. But <laughs> other than that, my business, basically. <laughs> basically. Well, now I feel bad asking about the one liners. Oh, no, no. Ask away about the one-liners, but there's not much more to them other than that. Like, I like to have a little joke about plastic surgery in my real life, too. And um, and so, yeah, f I'll put it in my music as well. There's a lot of funny things to say about that. So <laughs> why not? What else you got over there? Oh, that was uh, not... That's, that's the only one-liner you have ready to go? No, I've already talked about some other one-liners. 
It's yes, amazing. my son wears designer clothing and I have fake boobs. Well, because... <laughs> Because when you slipped, because I listened to the album and I was like, okay, she she is very private. You can tell you're not putting a lot of your personal life in it. So when I do hear some of these lines, I'm like, oh, that one stuck out because <laughs> she's talking about it. That's funny. When you are so vividly explaining your life, it's obvious. You know what I mean? Like, and the new classic, like, it is that. Like, dude, love, goddess, like, Jesus. I mean, even in my defense, like, that was ripped from reality to a certain degree, right? Yeah, it was. It was 100%. I mean, so is this whole album it obviously. is it different but from a different vantage point yeah from a different vantage point exactly and that is why the end of the uh, the end of an era is pretty unique 14 songs on the not deluxe what are we doing on the deluxe 16 17 i think it's 16 or 17 that's one song that i'm like oh, i don't know if you're gonna see the light of day well, um listen mm-hmm. to the end of an era we're gonna put a link in the, in the description below yes um uh, we we touched on emo club anthem. I had that on my list. Pillow yeah. fight. Yeah. I mean, w- did you actually have a pillow fight? No, or pillow fight is like not. Sex? That's more so like I think sirens or pillow fight. Those are really Brazil. Oh my god! Did you see what I deal with? <laughs> is it a friend? No, I wish it was. It's not uh, a lover. No, I don't have a lover. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I is, really don't. Is that healthy? I think so. It's better than having a shitty one. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey man, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, I think so. Yeah, having none. I mean, if none of them seem wor- worthwhile, then yeah, having none seems healthy. <laughs> I think. Uh, I've just been alone my entire I'm just life. Be like, so, yeah. I must have a lover. So <laughs> you'll do. Well, by the way, some people are like that though. Some people are, are desperately in need of a relationship. Good and just times are bad people. Yeah, see. <laughs> It's, I'm good. I'm good. You are. I can't do those. I'm like that again. Yeah, that's something you might do when you're a bit younger. I'm like, I have a child, so what would be the point in me wasting my time doing people that I just know it's not going anywhere fast with, or that are kind of terrible people? It's just like for what? I I'm not going to do that nowadays. It, when you can give your time and energy to the human being that you created, yeah, I'm like, I have a whole son that I spend my time with that I'm with who wakes up in the middle of the night that I want to be there to put down. I don't want to go and waste my night with some guy I don't give a f*** about, really. So I'm good on that. The End of an Era is an album you need to listen to. There's a link in the description below to listen to it. Um, But would you say instead of a period, there's like more of like a dot, dot, dot at the end of this? Or are we we sticking to period? It's kind of also a period. Uh, Yeah. Like... At first I was like, maybe I won't even say that I'm not going to make an album. But then I just felt like that's kind of mean to leave my fans like thinking that there's some other album coming in a year or two. And I really don't think that there is. So maybe I should just be transparent about the fact that I kind of have I have no intention of recording another album. Um, And everyone's like, but you love making music. And it's like, I know. And I will still make music just for other people. Um, But I just. Yeah, a lot would have to like magically change about myself for me to want to go back and make another album so what's on the agenda moving forward music for other people yeah i'm gonna write music for other people i have a makeup line that's in every altar and like every store across the entire universe it's on mars it's everywhere called totally plastic and i have like more capsule collections that come out that will be with altar and stuff too that i'm already working on for next year i have my perfume company that is going to be in stores too, so and I have to work on those things. And all there of are that just is a lot work. Of, it's a lot of work, especially like with me because I'm so meticulous and I am such a micromanager, control freak. Um, I just don't know. I just worry, I refuse to delegate. That's the problem. I refuse to. Um, it takes up so much time. Like my makeup collection, I've been working on for a year and a half, and it's like I. I don't go to bed most nights until about like 4 a.m. And then I wake up at like 8 o'clock in the morning. I have no time to sleep because I will be working on perfume, makeup, and my album as well as the fact that I do all my music videos. I do all the creative concepts. I sit in on every edit. I sit in on every color. I sit in on every beauty note that goes off to editors. I sit there while they design every logo. I sit there with next to somebody on a computer while we do my merchandising. I do every single element of it so it's like there is no delegating those things or time constraints to other people um 
and the, I'd only have so much time in the day and I only have so much time in the day as well to then delegate and give to my son mm. who has to have the most time because he deserves it, obviously, and I love him and that's who I want to give the most of my time to. But I'm like, I really don't have the time to raise a child and have three other projects ongoing all the time. People will be like, well, but other people do. It's like, but other people, maybe they pref- are better at delegating or they prefer to or I, I don't. Or don't have it. a kid. Yeah, I just, I like to, I need to be that involved in something for me to be happy to put it out with my name on it. And these things are always conceptualized, like, with my own ideas. And I like to see my own ideas through. I don't really like to hand them off to somebody else and say, okay, go on. It's a relay. Run across the finish line. Like, no. I refuse to pass it to somebody else. I like to be there for every element of it. And so... Things like the makeup collection, you know, there are so many different components, talking to vendors in China, figuring out injection molding, sampling them. you're involved in all of this? Yes, price pointing them, figuring out the (laughs) crazy ass way that it's like the zippers made here and then the bags here and you've got to get it from here to here on this timeline and this, that and the third and you can only put four gel colors in this, but how's it floating and the pans breaking and blah, 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 blah. It's like there are so many components to the Oh my god! It would do like you just don't sleep. I have felt like I haven't slept for a year and a half. Um, and you've it's, been like this for a while since as long as I've known you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, um, tiring but fun. <laughs> but like, I can't be that overworked for that prolonged amount of time because I find myself to be like mentally exhausted honestly that sometimes i'm just like i can't even think because i have so many things that i have to do when i you know someone will call me and be like just like the other day they're like you are going to do the cover of this magazine so think of the creative concept for what the photo shoot's going to be and it's like okay well give me five seconds because i have to do this 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 i have to get all of my deliverables for my altar banners done and i've got to make sure that i have the PR bucks and this and that and the third with makeup but then I'm also trying to shoot my album cover and conceptualize that and figure out the location and the permits for it while I'm also trying to figure out color correcting a video for the cosmetic launch that needs to get done but also I have to go to Rocco's that night to promote (laughs) I am the strip club but then also the next morning I've got to be up at 7 a.m because my son wakes up and we have to do stuff and I'm there doing a swimming lesson for him or whatever it is that we're doing and it's just like there are so many elements of it that's like when in that do I have time to be creative because being creative for me at least I don't feel that I can do that when I'm overwhelmed with a million other things that I need to answer to and um so it's just like I need to have a little bit more time to do nothing to be cre- – to, but the to nothing be- is being creative. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like do you think you'll be able to write more better songs and create art that is – I mean I don't know, more in tune with you or more in tune with somebody else when you have less going on and less noise coming in and out? Oh, yeah, 100,000%. And like for me, what I found so enjoyable like with the makeup line – um, It's just that, like, there are so many elements to that that are similar to what I do in music. Like, I do so many visual things in my music, and it's undeniable because everything is cohesive for years. And it's like, I think I'm very good at color theory or understanding those sorts of things that lend themselves to makeup. Um, I think I'm very good at packaging and merchandising things. I know that. People will show me, like, if only hair music was as good as their packaging. And it's like, well... Yeah, but it's all together. Like the aesthetic it's brought you to it. the music. Yeah, exactly. Like, but my, I think I'm very good at those things, though, and they do lend themselves to, yeah. particularly to any kind of prod, product merchandising that you're doing, particularly makeup is color based. So I think that it was good and fun to do that. And I think that, like, there's a certain degree of like transformational purpo- quality of makeup or ridiculousness that comes with that that I love. And um, I love having a big theme i think everybody knows that about me i like to take from music or movies into music or i love the big escapism i love all that so like it's been fun to bring those elements to to um to makeup or to something else and i'm like wow this is like a lot of the same thing packaged up differently and this is really fun to me because i can only 
I am only me in music, obviously. I'm only talking about my experiences in music. There's only certain parts of my personality necessarily that people really are interested to see when it comes to music. Like, you don't want to know my perspective about everything. Let's be real. Like, you want to hear my perspective on certain topics and not on others. So that, in a way, can be a bit limiting. When I've been releasing music since 2011... And being and had a fan base going and the rest of it, so it's like that's where a, I'm a I'm a decade into that. Um, and that's a long time, and I really feel that I've like mastered a lot of those elements. But like for me, it's funner to it's been more fun to learn to master some new Most elements stuff. or new things or be able to have themes that maybe may, would make no sense for music that I couldn't necessarily, like, implement. But it's like, well, I can do this idea is cool because now I can do this within, like, making a capsule collection or whatever else it is. It's been really... With the perfume, too, like, that's been enjoyable and fun to me to not be as limited in, like, the concepts because I can only make visuals that go with my music. on. So I can only make thematic things that lend themselves to whatever the song thematically is. It's been cool to just be like, the world's your oyster, what the is the theme make the collection around it do whatever you want that's fun what fulfills you though like what part of this whole thing actually at the end of the day like makes you feel whole uh just being able to create anything i just find the idea that the the having a a concept and then bringing that to life and all the things that you do do that are part of it that no one ever knows like it is such a big feat to think of something and then actually do the something people have million dollar ideas all day long but they don't ever yeah. get to actually see them to fruition so for me like the thing that i feel passionate about whether it's music whether it is makeup whether it's a f- hat that i'm making on my store whatever it is like i like making an idea and making the idea happen that to me is what is fulfilling and that's what i feel passionate about is it a relief having this album out finally knowing that music's one less thing you have to worry about like once the tour is over um in a way yes i feel i do feel kind of like a weight off my shoulders in a way but i think that i feel that every time i put a project out like it, yeah, but every time because you there's a- so much stuff to do and then when it's finally done you're like oh, you can breathe but every I time but every time you put a project out you kind of know in the back of your head there's another one that's gonna have to come like this one is i may be done like this is it yeah i mean there's a good it's a good feeling to know i don't owe anybody there's not some I mean, I never really felt like that so much with Empire because it's just the distribution deal. So there's not that like much pressure with it the way that it is with major labels. But still, I just like knowing that there's one less person for me to have to answer to. That's fun. I enjoy that. With all this reflection, is there a song you've put out that you wish you didn't? Mm. You can be honest. It could be a feature. It could be yours. The only song I'm going to hate is this song, Bounce. But that's not because I said something terrible in it or anything. It's just that it's a terrible song, and I never really liked that song, even when I did it. I never wrote that song for myself. It was written for somebody else, um, and I had referenced it, and it hadn't gone to the person yet. And then one day we were in a Spotify, not a Spotify, we were in a YouTube uh What's the thing called when they're like, it's new people and they shine like a spotlight on them? Oh, like new artist spotlight New artist spotlight, some type of thing for that. I forget what that's called, but um, they were considering giving me their like uh, new artist spotlight where they, you get to do like some renditions of your songs live or get some mini music videos made. Okay. They kind of give you like some little funding and a booster With on Viva. the platform. Vivo, that's what yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, Vivo Lift. Yes, Vivo Lift. <laughs> So I was trying to be the Vivo Lift campaign for that month and they were thinking about it and they were like, well, what is your music that you've got new music? And I had only just started working on the new classic and I didn't really have anything to show them on the spot. So my manager had played them this um, reference I'd done for someone else in mind, but they had my voice on it. Like, well, she has this thing. And they were like, oh, this song's so pop and it's so cool. If she finished this song and this was the thing, like... We would give her the Vivo Lift campaign. So she kind of came back from that meeting. My manager was like, this is your song now. You better do a (laughs) second burst because that's how I just secured you the Vivo Lift campaign. And I was like, oh, all right. You know, I never really had this in mind for myself. Who did you have Um, in mind? I can't say who I had it in, who was in mind for it. Um, But it was somebody popular. Um, Did the song ever get to them? 
No, because it had to be mined right. for the yeah. lift campaign. So they'll never know if that could have been a hit for them. They knew they were supposed to kind of do it, but it just sort of went off and didn't happen. Um, sorry, but wow. we ended up doing another different song, so it worked out anyway. It worked out together. We did a better song together, and it was a hit, so it's fine. Um, but uh, Rita Ora? I'm never going to say, Zach, I'm never going to play this game with you. <laughs> oh. But that's how I ended up with a song that I never really felt was for me because the intention never was for it to be yours for me. Yeah, so I always have felt funny sitting with that song. It's always felt a little bit funny for me because I never felt like it. Always felt like this was never my. This wasn't my song. You didn't I don't make it like, for you. It's not f- me. It's weird, but at the same time, I don't hate it because I do think getting that Vivo Lift campaign was a pivotal mo- mm. moment for me in helping me to break out and helping more people to discover me. So. It, if it was doing that song or writing that second verse to that song that I do think was very pivotal, pivotal, um, you know, that's the trade. That's the trade off. That trade off was well worth it. But that's the one song I would kind of delete because I just don't feel that it was ever for me. Is there a song that had the most impact that like it, when you look back, you're like, this one changed my life and everything was different after this? Well, of course, you Fancy? could go and say Fancy. But for me, I really think it was work. Mm. Okay. Actually, that's the song I say for me is that song. For me, it's work. A lot of people why? say fancy. Like, why? For, why is the diff- What is it about work for you? Uh, for me, work's just the perfect song. Um, it's biographical. It has a lot of lyricism. Um, it's got great cadences that are unexpected. It changes between hip hop drums to full EDM break. But is it? Um, it's got great transitions. I am a. If you don't know, I'm a whore for a transition. If you can't <laughs> tell, if you go back and listen to all my music, you'll know I'm a super slut for transitions. Isn't that the magic? Like, w- there's many things that you do that's magic on a record, but I do think that there's something to that hip hop EDM combination, and I yeah, think I love it, that. It, it polarized people. Yes, of course, of course. Y- I, but that's what I love. I th- love to polarize too. Well, because the freaking <laughs> verses are so good and your flow's magnificent. Yeah. I think for me, that's why I love work so much. It has all of those elements and I just, I felt really accomplished making that mm-hmm. song. And um, I think that it got a lot of people's attention like, well, maybe she does have lyricism or maybe she can make a song that's catchy or maybe she is going to like push things um, to somewhere that's un- an unexpected place. Um and it's just over time I don't get tired of performing that song. I love Fancy. It it changed my way more from a monetary s- standpoint or in other ways with fame. But I think like work is a song that creatively pushed me forward and that I feel really like proud of. Um, I don't necessarily feel proud of Fancy from a purely like creative standpoint. I get that. If that makes sense. Like. I'm proud of it because it changed my life and it was amazing, but I don't feel like I don't look back at fancy and think like, I'm so proud of that. That was such a like amazing piece of work. Is it because <laughs> like, it's, I think of that about work. Is it because it's so simple? Fancy? Um, yeah. And just like, I know that I don't think there's much lyricism in fancy. Um, but that's not the point of that song. That's it. Every song's point isn't to be lyrical or every song isn't to be biographical. I think, Fancy, what's great about Fancy is that it has an incredible amount of hooks packed into one song. And that was the point of that song. How many hooks can I get in one song? It's got like six if you really think about it. Is that why it worked? I it think does. that's why it works. Yeah. It's just as many hooks as you can get in a song. And it and that's what's awesome about it. But it wasn't groundbreaking in other ways. And it, its intention wasn't to be. But like I feel creatively still very proud of work. I f- would feel proud of work if I made it. To, tomorrow, if I made that song for the first time, I'd be like, whoa, pinnacle moment. This is amazing. I really like it. Is there a feature you've done that you thought was challenging and transformative in a way? Because you wrote your own features. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, they all have to be challenging because you're working with a, a, a wide set of personalities. Right. Everyone's different. Right. I don't know. I've done so many random features. There are... There's not one feature that I'm like, whoa, that's the one. The only one that maybe sticks out for me was Problem with Ariana Grande. And as much as I love Ari, I really do. The reason why that sticks out wasn't because of her. It was because of Max Martin. (laughs) Because Max Martin is my my top three songwriting heroes. 
and I had like, you know, listened to his anything that he would write or have a production credit on, I would listen to and he was kind of like always this fantasy writer that I was like, Max Martin, if you could ever write a song as good as Max Martin, Max Martin. Like the a lot Wizard of people. Of Oz. He is the Wizard of Oz. And a lot of people that are in the right music or are interested in that would understand why I'd feel that way about him. And um, so like with Ariana and that song, the fact that I got to, that was the first time I got to go in and meet Max Martin and to be able to write a song in a room with him. It was, it was a very pivotal moment for me where I was I like, holy, f- like I've, talked about max martin for years and years and years as one of my songwriting heroes and now i'm sitting here and i'm writing a verse for max martin (laughs) this is amazing so like that was a really like pivotal pivotal moment in my career where i felt very um validated that i was a good writer because i was in a room with max martin and he wasn't helping me write something he was just like do this and i was like Okay, I've got to f- do this. Did he give you any notes? No, he. I just went in there and I said it, and he was like, "It's great." And that was, and I he didn't. He liked it, and I was wanted to absolutely piss my pants about it. <laughs> I'll never forget. He gave it to me, um, and he let me put it on my phone. He gave me some headphones, and he made me sat, sit on the patio, and I did it and ate my lunch and went back in. I was like, mm. I was really nervous to record it because he didn't know what I had said it was a different usually when i do features i do them in my own recording environment and send them back i'd never like with max it was different because he's a big important person so it was like you will come in here and you will write you'll you'll go to doheny probably right and yeah it was i know the courtyard you ate lunch in yeah it was like okay so i'm on the spot here with this i don't have like five hours to sit around mulling around taking my time i have to go and do this like I'm hearing the beat. I have to do this. It was a lot more pressure. It was a different way of writing. And now he hasn't heard what my lyrics are. I'm not like saying this song to him in the studio. Like, what do you guys think? Which is still how I work now. Like I said, with the whiteboard where I'm like, ah, what do you guys think? Collaboration. You like that? Yeah, let's move on. Let's keep going. I'm going to keep running more of this. You like that part? Okay. Eh, it's a little weak. All right. No, we'll do this. We'll do that. What do you think? Ha <laughs> ha. Who's asking? <laughs> Magnet. Ah! Yeah, that's hilarious. You think so, right? Yeah, cool. All right, I'm keeping it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but, but this you have it's to a trust lot more yourself. transactional in that way. I don't write my verse, and it's like, Shh, and then I go in the booth, and I'm like, blah, 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 just saying it, and you're like, whoa, that was amazing. I didn't know she was gonna say that. Like, <laughs> I don't write that way. Um, so like to do that with Max, it was definitely different and scary to me because I always have this validation of that my idea or what I'm going to say is good or that it needs to be changed and I change it. So I'm always in the booth knowing that what I'm saying is what's staying. I And I know that the people in there listening to it have already validated me and said that, yes, this is worthy of recording. Mm-hmm. Whereas recording that verse with Max was like, is this worthy of recording? I don't know. I haven't asked Max. I'm just saying it. And he might be in there cringing, hating it or What's it going to be? But he really liked it. Um, so I was really pleased with myself that f- day, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> By the way, a verse probably heard billions and billions of times now. Yeah, for sure. Lots of times. Yeah, That's there's, a good one. <laughs> yeah, there's checks still clear, yeah? Great song. Yeah. Sure <laughs> <I> do. <laughs> Just ask my new swimming pool. <laughs> they do. Uh, on what, One question about the end of an era. Was there any thought like, okay, if this is my last album, I should get some massive features on there? Yeah, of course I would have loved to have massive features, but people are fake as f- yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like you said the same thing on this show before. Yeah. It's true. People might like your pitches, but that doesn't mean they're going to send you a f- verse. They're busy or they want to do the next song or they want to write with you in the studio or whatever f- it is. And I'm like, well, it's my last one, so I guess you ain't going to be in the night. So it's fine. The Thank last you for train. liking my pitches, though. I like yours, too. You're hot. Um, but... You know, it is what it is. I don't even feel any type of way about that. To be honest with you, like, yes, the industry is very fake. Yes, I do ask bigger artists to be on my songs. Yes, they're always sick or washing their hair that day. It's okay. I understand. I'm a controversial person to work with or whatever the f- I Maybe I'm bad for business. I don't know. But the silver lining to that, I think, is that, like, 
it's forced me to go out and find talent that I believe in and it's nice. made me actually be able to create opportunity for other artists that are new then I've been able to give them the platform then it's like yeah it would be awesome to have like these massive artists on my album that would help me actually in this situation but if I can't get help from someone else that's okay I can actually help somebody else by putting them on what is a massive platform for them so I'm going to do that instead and I'm going to work with people that I really believe should be heard and that I believe are talented and that I want to help out so if I can't get help, that's okay. I can be help for somebody else, and that's cool, too. What a beautiful way to look at it. It's the only way to look at it, well, I think. And that leads me into my next question, which is, like, as we talk about this being the end of an era, how do you want people to remember you? Well, I mean, I'm not f- dying. They're still going <laughs> to f- see me every f- <laughs> I'm still on Instagram being in a f- swimsuit four days a week at least, babe. <laughs> I'm he- out this mother. F- I have Twitter. I don't magically not have a opinion um i like the idea that maybe i could like write a song and it's a hit and you'll never know i wrote it I, that cool. would like give me so much satisfaction it's kind of like on my list of things to still do is, do you want to write a song for somebody else that's, that's in the top 10 that you don't know is mine but would you come out after and say by the no, way that's so cheesy but i just like it would give me personal satisfaction i don't need the haha i told you moment like i just it would give me satisfaction because, like, sometimes I'll really think to myself, like, I think I'm a good writer and I think if somebody else sung this song, I think it would be received differently and I really want to test that theory out. So will Bad. you go back to any Bad. of the artists that said no to a feature but n- maybe hit them and say, let's get into the studio and let me write for you? Yeah, of course, because I don't even take it that personally. And honestly, I think a lot of them um, may get sent things and not know that it's written by me. Hell Yeah. Because I'm not out here necessarily always writing with... uh, All artists don't write in the studio with people. Sometimes they get just sent references and they say them. Um, (laughs) And that's fine too. But I don't plan on referencing the songs I write with my own voice. So I do think that, that, you know, like I still am signed to Sony ATV and I have a publishing deal with them. So I do plan and they know that I'm writing now just for other people and they're like send me send through reference tracks like we want 10 of them like this person's doing an album that person's doing an album will you go and write as camps and i'm like yes will you do this that and the third i'm like yep i want to i started in writers camps you know i started my career that way i think it's really fun i love writers camps so i'm like yeah i would come be in the writers camp right a lot of the writers i already know you know so it's just like i think that would be so fun to do and i think that there might be people out there maybe one day even saying my not realizing till after they've said it that actually whoever the whoop 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 that is this name on your song is that it's actually me and I actually wrote it a lot of it for you so, and I think that's cool that they wouldn't even like be no. able to have that bias or no I kind of love that yeah I want this I love for that you. I want it for me too I want it so Man. The, the image of you walking into a writer's camp to write for somebody else is something I can never get out it's of It's funny because I wrote with um, this girl um, on Good Times with Bad People and we wrote that hook together and she was like, I didn't even really write this. You f-ing wrote everything. And I was like, no, you did write. You helped a lot too. She did. But she was like, I don't, I'm like not used to coming in and actually writing with like people. I so often come in the room and the artist is just like, uh, I don't know what I want to write about. Uh, write a song. Uh, I sit in the corner of the room and I write a song for them and then they go say it. I'm like, I know, I know. So like there are a lot of people like that that are, I've written like with that now are like, we should write songs. We should make whole beat packs together. We should do 10 of these songs and go send them out to all the girls that are working on their albums and see what they want to do this would be really fun so there's a lot of that happening for me at the moment now too where i'm like yeah i'm ready to do this i just haven't been able to really get into it because i've been finishing up so many things for myself that i'm like you know next year i would love to spend a couple of days a week just going and working on other people's projects or having my friends that are in town like hey i'm in town for a week writing for this person that person do you want to get in and like do some writing sessions for them see what happens like yeah i really want to do those things still in my career i started out in writing camps like trying to f- write songs for kerry hilson's album that never ended up you know getting placed on there but that's like the writers big writers camp that i got into that i was like whoa 
And I just think it's so fun to write from someone else's perspective. So I really want to like get back to that. Would you ever write another like a rap verse for somebody? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Totally. I thought you were just talking pop songs. No, I mean rap. Too. So what if Cardi B called you and was like, I'm working on a... I know she doesn't... She uses if anybody, writers, if bunch of writers. If anybody that raps, anybody out there that wants, you know, a song, it doesn't even have to have my name on it. I'm around. I'm Beautiful. around. Straight up. What are you thinking? Nothing. I think we got covered a lot. Yeah, the we end, did. The end of an era. Uh, is this the last time you're going to come in here? Is that, is that what that means? Maybe. No. Uh, maybe. It was nice knowing you. Nice to know you too. Bye. See you guys. See you, on the other See you later. Side. See you later. <laughs> no, seriously, listen to the end of an era. There's a link in the description below. And I really do think that you should use this as an opportunity to not just listen to this new album, but go back and listen to all the other stuff that he's put out there. Because, yo, you are you are ahead of your time Thank in a you. serious way. And well, I hope people will love this just as much, honestly. Like, I really feel that this project, this album is very special to me. I don't know. I just feel like it's the most me thing I've ever done. It just is. Like, I don't know. It's just so me. Is it so <laughs> you because it's you f over the last decade? Yeah, maybe. Like, in my defense is me, but it's a portion of me. All those projects are a portion of me. I've never, like, compiled them all into one thing to yes. where you're like, this is really, like, an album for me usually is me fo like hyper focusing on a small bit of me and expanding on a small bit of me, whereas this feels more like these are really all of the things that I love or a lot of my thoughts on. It's all like wrapped up in there. I think Day Three Miami is really my favorite song on that album, though it is. Stream that song. Stream the album. Link in the description Miami. below. Iggy Azalea, everybody. Hey. Love. Um, thank you. Glad to have gotten to talk to you before I, you know, stop existing or whatever it was that you guys were saying <laughs> before I go. Just poof into the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> this album comes out, you just vanish. Yeah, I'm like, I'm still around. I mean, I might do a verse or something. I might feature on some songs. Well, and, you, know, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll, but I'm not. Featuring I'm just not good signing money. A, I'm not signing any record deals. Smart. I'm not. No. Why I would, don't want to. Why would you? But also you have the means to do it all yourself and you can release your own art if you want. Like you can yeah. you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Right now I just want to do other for at least a good like year or two or three. Yeah. Uh, there's two. There's not enough time in the day. Because you can, you should do it. Because I can, I should do it. It's like a lot of people have to make music until they're 60 because they're like, this is all I can do. It's all I, this is, I have to do this. What else will I do? And it's just like, I don't want to get into that space in my career either where it's like you actually have to make this even if you don't want to it's like I don't feel like it makes sense for me right now and there are other things I can do that I'm super creative that I'm excited to do and so it, I would be like playing myself to continue to do something that I'm not like 100% um present in or able to like 100% feel comfortable partaking in right now like to do that and leave these other things on the table or not give them my full attention and then later on in life I'm like, well, what else do I do? It's like, well, you probably could have done this or this or this or this, but you never took the time to like to to bother developing those things or to get better at them. It's like I don't I don't want to be I don't and also I hate touring. But it, it's a long yeah. as, you're about to, as you're about to go on tour. No, but I love it's different because that's the lost this is like the lost hurrah in a way for touring so yeah. i'm f hype as f to go on the pitbull tour because yeah. i'm like i get to live it up and then i'm going home it's only a two-month tour usually for me touring or at a certain point cool. in my life touring was like i'm spending 30 days out of the entire year at home and then not 30 days in a row yeah. and i'm having to sacrifice my relationships with people i'm having to sacrifice moments with my family now that that involves a child too or i'm homesick i'm tired my body's over it like mm -hmm. i want to lay in my own bed i want to you know what i mean like i feel that i sacrificed a lot of that throughout my 20s to with touring even though i do actually the funny thing is i love being on stage and i love like 
live stage shows and meeting the fans and stuff, but it's getting to and from the shows and the brutalness of the travel element of touring. Well, it it ruins your body. That's what kills you. Yeah, then I'm like, I just don't want to do that anymore Mm -hmm. and I don't want to do it with a kid. I love the idea that I can go on this Pitbull tour and it's only two months, which is not brutal in terms of a schedule when you've done it for so long. And then my son is coming on some of the funner moments of the tour, but I'm keeping him at home for the more brutal road elements of it. Are you going to bus it? Yeah, I'm busing in and then jetting in certain parts, but um, well, that's like you know, my like I, that's the only way to really do it is to jet. But then you have to plan the tour appropriately, and then it's you not need... possible to jet the whole time. That's no. the thing. Yeah, well, there's got, some or, parts that you just have to. First of all, it's expensive, so your margins get, f- and the planning is exceptionally hard, and it's almost like why. Well, like, and with me too, I'm like, I have a baby. My yeah. ba- my son still sleeps in a crib. Ugh. I can't put a crib on the bus. If he's awake at 7 a.m. and the bus still is driving for six hours, he doesn't have enough balance that he can be running around on a moving bus like an adult does. So then what? Is he sitting in a seat for eight hours trying to get to the next location? Mm. Is he having fun doing that? No, he's not. A jet taking off and wow. landing, that's going to wake a kid up. Then he's awake in the middle of the night because we went somewhere on a jet that's not it's not fair to him it's not enjoyable for him so I have some points in the tour where there are hubs where I'm like he's based in Houston and I'm going in and out every night and I'm here with him seeing him though and coming back so that he's not being um transient yeah but he's still seeing me but like I can't do that all the time. That is another big factor in it where it's just like, you know, we are talking about making music. We are talking about making a living. We're not really making money off streaming. We're making money touring as artists. You've got to be a touring artist. It's not an option nowadays if you're going to really be banking in on what it is that you've taken two years to create. You're touring out of that. And I can't do it. And I don't want to do it because I want to be with my son in my house and I want him to have an enjoyable day on one time zone with his friend Leo that lives across the street. And we go to the park and we do fun play with dinosaurs. That's what I want to do. <laughs> and you should do that for as long as you want. Yeah. And also the heart wants what it doesn't have. So Yeah, exactly. And I think I'm like, that's one of the really elements of it too, to where I'm like, I'm so lucky. I got to do this for 10 years nonstop. I've been to every country and every city that I ever wanted to go to more than one time everything that I wanted to do as a child within my musical career I have done it and then some that I never thought would be possible I've I'm rich as like being blunt I didn't even (laughs) think that that would happen honestly like I thought I would just be able to like if I I would have been so happy to just be like I can pay my bills of my apartment with rap music like that to me was what success looked like when I first started out so to be living where I'm living all the way that I'm living now um to be even be like I'm jetting in and out of my show like so casually like the fact that I can even do that I didn't think I would be able to do that I've got I've achieved more than I came and set out to achieve for myself if I'm being honest and I'm really just really happy with the way the last 10 years have been I don't want to like keep going at something if there are things about it that aren't like vibing with me it's just like well for like why for what is there no fear that the money can run out she got makeup money we see Rihanna's a billionaire I think she'll be all right no there's not fear of the money running out I have investments in like donuts and (laughs) <laughs> sodas and weird cereals and i send them to my house every month like here's what's happening with the cereal and i'm like awesome flavor um so no i'm not worried about the money running out got it <laughs> no i have money in that you I, I'm would probably, never even know about yeah i'm probably using but i don't it. even know that i'm like oh what <laughs> cool i don't know the guys tell me like I'm really lucky. My manager is a really smart businessman. He has, like, I'm like his fet, I'm like his passion project. He doesn't even, he's always like, I don't really make that much money off you, honestly. I just like you. And I'm like, I know. I know. You know, he does other products and is invested in brands and things like that. And I've seen him be so successful financially and so secure financially that I, when I got a little bit of money, I was like, can you just tell me whatever you're doing? Can you just do it for me too? Like Smart. if you're putting 400 grand in that, could I put 100 grand in that? Cause I don't have as much money as you, but like, could I be, could I piggyback off your good decisions about? And he's like, yes. 
So, like, he just will come to me and be like, this is the thing that I, we're doing, so do you want to put 200 grand in this? Because you should. And I'm like, yeah, I trust you. So I just trust that he has really sm- he's really smart at stuff like that and i just do what he tells me to do and it seems to work out <laughs> so that's so it's all about who you know i think is a lesson in that like Amazing. sometimes it's not about being the smartest person in the room as you they could say it's about just knowing who to ask to get the answer or to have the ability that to acknowledge that you don't know the answer and like i don't know that much about business or i'm not some like person that has such vision that I can identify brands that are going to do well or something but I know someone that I think has that vision and he his life sure does seem like he's got that vision to me (laughs) and take my money so I just give him my money and yeah be like do whatever you're doing do whatever you're doing do it more with my money even my mom came to me and was like do you think he could take my money and just do whatever you guys are doing? And I'm like, yeah, we could probably do that too. Yes. So like, it's all about who you know. I think like if you ever want to do anything in life, whether it's investing something or if it's something creative or whatever, like if you don't feel you have the scope of the vision, like just make friends with people that you think do or that you look up to or that you admire, like make friends with those people in any element of life that you want to succeed in. And if there's something that you feel you're lacking, Find people that you think, like, can deliver what it is that you need and, like, follow their advice. Just don't always try to come up with your own. And, like, I have faith in people in those ways. I have faith in myself creatively and my creative vision. And I have faith in other people in the business endeavors and other things. And so, no, I don't feel that the money will run out. Iggy I'm okay. <laughs> I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You're yeah. Please. I just feel like we said goodbye 700 I times. I did. Hey, beautiful human, thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.